it seems to go in that direction. Now, is this plain even true? Depends on what we substitute for n. If we substitute 0, it's certainly true. If we substitute 1, it's also true. Substitute 2, and it's true. Substitute 3, that's true too. Substitute 4, the pattern holds up, it's true. If we substitute a negative integer, it's still true. If we substitute a number with a fractional part, it's, it's well, it's false. Everything checks out except one case. Let's look at the graph. The red line is where above the green line is true. It seems to be a little bit of a strange behavior between 2 and 3. Let's zero in on that a bit. Yeah, the red line is above before 2 and after 3. And zero in between 2 and 3. Using the RIP plot and dinosaur like application. Yeah, right between two and a half and three, the red line goes below, but otherwise it's above. Let's change our plane and say three to the n is greater than equal to n cubed for all the natural numbers. We'll try to prove this using mathematical induction. We need to show two things. First, we need to show that whatever the plane is true for some natural number n, it must also be true for the next natural number n plus one. And for any natural numbers that this argument doesn't cover, we need to verify them independently. Here's a first attempt at a proof. We let n be the name of some arbitrary natural number. Here's our inductive hypothesis, 3 to the n plus 1 over n cubed. Working things through for 3 to the n plus 1, after a bit of algebra and using the inductive assumption, we get 3n cubed, we start to rearrange that. Now it is an extra assumption that n is at least 3. And that allows us to rewrite things in such a way that if we factor it, we show that it's all greater than or equal to n plus 1 cubed. But we strengthened our assumption. We went from our inductive hypothesis being 3 to the n greater than or equal to n cubed to that and n is at least 3. We needed this extra bit of strength since for the first few values of n, we don't have the important step to our argument that 3 n cubed is at least n plus 1 cubed. Verifying 3 to the n for a few base cases, we've already done, we've already verified it when n is 0, 1, 2, or 3. We did that earlier. Here's a strange thing. Although 3 to the 0 is greater than 0 cubed is true, it's not enough to show that 3 to the 1 is greater than or equal to 1 cubed. Similarly, 3 to the 1 greater than or equal to 1 cubed is true, but not enough to show that 3 squared is greater than or equal to 2 cubed. And 3 squared greater than or equal to 2 cubed is true, but not enough to show that 3 cubed is greater than or equal to 3 cubed. We need four base cases, 0, 1, 2, 